A very good evening to everyone joining us from Australia and Southeast Asia. Good afternoon to those of us who are joining us from Indian subcontinent and the Middle East. Good morning to our friends in Africa and Europe. And a very good morning to those who have joined us all the way from North America. Welcome everyone to My Voice Forum Global 2022 Speak Up, Be Heard an initiative by KitKat Events and Marketing in association with Global Influencers Publishing House, both companies founded by two very determined and passionate women. One of them is me, Neera Gupta, and the other one is my partner, Shikha Sarkar, who has been working tirelessly behind the scenes. Shikha, are you back? Can you? Oh, you are. Thank God. I was like, oh, I'm going to take your name. <laughs> Oh, there you go. So come on, say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Shikha Sarkar. It's such a pleasure being here, present with all of you, bringing this amazing event to, uh, to such wonderful people who are with us today. Uh, we've put our heart and soul in this event, and we hope you all enjoy uh, during the session, and you will be motivated, inspired, and empowered by being here too. So thank you so much for joining us today again. And with that, over to you, Neera. Thank you, Shikha, for that. At KitKat Events and Marketing, we believe in sharing responsibility and making a difference, turning challenges into inspiration, and ultimately providing each other support and encouragement to make life happen on our own terms. We have been in the forefront of empowering women through our series of events, forums, conferences, awards, even building an offline and online community. Our focus always has been on creating a safe space for like-minded women to come together, engage in and discuss pressing issues related to us women. One such initiative, which has now become a movement is hashtag my voice. As many of you know that we started this in the midst of the pandemic, to bring together women from our network through a series of events. And what started off as a small initiative has now grown to thousands of women across the globe. That, of course, encouraged us to bring the stories of some of the most amazing women to hundreds and thousands of people around the world, to be able to inspire many more and leave a legacy behind through the medium of books which is why we set up Global Influencers Publishing House, perhaps the only publishing company that is run entirely by a team of women from editors, lawyers, marketing, finance, tech support, designing, operations, you name it. And our aim has always been to publish books that inspire, that motivate, empower, teach, enrich, connect, inform, stimulate, or even provoke you to think differently. And we believe that everyone has a story and by writing it, you're creating a legacy. And this journey has been amazing for us because what we have been able to do is showcase the unsung heroes and community champions shifting from living ordinary to being extraordinary achievers. Since our first book, My Voice Volume 1, that was released in June 2021, we have created and promoted more than 125 authors across the world. And we've done this through five volumes of the My Voice book series, the anthology, Shaken Stirred But Not Deterred, and many other solo books, all of which have gone on to becoming Amazon number one bestsellers as well as raised significant amount of funds for our charity partner, Singapore Children's Society, to support the future voices of this world. Our aim is to continue to bring the authentic voices of everyday women from all walks of life in our diverse and thriving community, celebrate their exceptional accomplishments and achievements through books. For those of you who are interested in reading our books, you can, of course, purchase them on Amazon. Links are being shared on the chat. And of course, 
If you too are an aspiring author and keen to get your work published, you can certainly email us or check out our website. Details, you will find them on the chat as well. For those of you who want to know more about our events or join our community, you can follow our LinkedIn page or even join our My Voice Forum Facebook group. Today, it's my pleasure and honor to host My Voice Forum Global 2022 Speak Up, Be Heard, an event that featured more than 40 world-renowned international speakers, thought leaders, academics, experts, change agents, and community builders over the period of three days with a simple mission to come together to discuss the challenges women face in a changing world and how we can all collaborate to move forward. Each topic was well curated and researched providing attendees a thought-provoking and an interactive platform to exchange views and reflect upon overcoming challenges to achieve their personal best. None of this would have happened without the support of our sponsors. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our presenting sponsors, Mrs. Purvi Shroff and the late Mr. Rusi Shroff and our gold sponsors, GFC, Global Financial Consultants, for believing in us throughout the years. When you are heard, you are sharing responsibility and making a difference, turning challenges into inspiration and ultimately providing much needed support to make life happen at your own terms. To have a voice, they say, is to have some measure of power. So speak up and be heard. With that, I'd like to once again welcome you all to the day three of My Voice Forum Global 2022, My Journey, My Story, My Voice. Today, you will meet some of the most amazing women who have co-authored the My Voice book series, as well as the anthology, Shaken, Stirred, But Not Deterred, and get a glimpse of their journey. Find out what's been their inspiration behind writing the stories and what is the impact that they have created for themselves and for the world. These are the women who were determined not to be beaten by obstacles placed in their path, but instead face their adversity by making life happen for themselves and those around them better. Not only each one of them needs to be applauded for having the courage and determination to share their stories, but they also need to be encouraged because, because of them, someone somewhere who's read about it is feeling today supported, loved, inspired, motivated, empowered, or simply comforted knowing that they're not alone. We sincerely hope you'll enjoy this session today and participate actively by cheering for our panelists and posting comments in the chat. And before we start, um, Shikha, do we have everyone? Can we do a group picture? Oh, I don't have Shikha. Oh, there I have her. <laughs> I think we're still missing Julie. Maybe I promoted her and maybe she dropped out. Okay, so what we'll do is, uh, Shika, you let me know. Um, and then in between, we could do the group picture. So let, let's take a group picture now and then okay. we'll come back and take it again. Okay. Okay. You there? Julie is there. I can see her. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, Angela, can you switch on your camera, please? I'm sorry that my background hasn't come up. Um, I need okay. to fix it. Okay. No I'll, 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 I'll need to log right. out and log back in again. That's all right. We'll get a picture and then. Yeah. Just smile on everybody's face. Thank you. Oh, let's do one, one more. Break okay. the bias.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, without further ado, I would like to invite our first panelist for today. So what I'm gonna do is I'll introduce everybody and then we'll go on to questions. Based in Pakistan, Dr. Norshin Takbi is a renowned clinical nutritionist with a medical background and master's in public health. She regularly features on TV shows and social media channels to create awareness and help people understand about nutrition. She co-authored the book, My Voice, Collective Memoir by Women of Substance, Volume 1. Can you give us a wave? All right, up next we have Bindu Sangani. She's a chartered accountant and a law of attraction coach, a global keynote speaker residing in India. Bindu is on a mission to transform 1 million lives by 2030. She co-authored the book, My Voice, Stories of Transformation and Purpose by Women of Substance, Volume 2. Give a round of applause to Bindu. Next, we have is Mavada Alwazir. She's a life coach living in UAE. She's also the owner of Me, Myself, and I Life Coaching, and a woman who's devoted to helping people live their best life possible. She co-authored My Voice, Inspiring Stories of Hope, Courage, and Fearlessness, Volume 5. Give us a wave. Based in Singapore, Nasha Heather is an internationally experienced program manager within the healthcare and health tech industries and an academic research environment, who is enthusiastic about promoting technology-driven business solutions. Nasha is co-authoring her very first book, My Voice, Volume 6, which will be released in Jan 2023. Joining us from UK is Angela Hancock. She specializes in helping women achieve time and financial freedom and is in the process of becoming sorry i'll repeat that joining us from uk is angela hancock who specializes in helping women achieve time and financial freedom and in the process become the healthiest versions of themselves she's a professional nwm fitness leader hypnotherapist nlp practitioner she co-authored the book my voice Journey of Survival, Empowerment, and Self-Compassion, Volume 4. Next up, we have Tidimalo Shabalala. She is a South African public relations specialist with over 10 years of working experience in public relations industry, having worked for global agencies launching international brands across Pan-African countries. Tidi is the co-author of the book, My Voice, Inspiring Stories of Hope, Courage and Fearlessness, Volume 5. Give us a wave. Based in Hong Kong, Michelle Harris is a founder of Michelle Harris International, offering emotional healing, mental health shifts, soul mentoring, energy tools, and effective life solutions to those seeking peace, growth, and transformation. Michelle has co-authored Shaken Stirred But Not Deterred, as well as My Voice, Journeys of Self-Discovery and Resilience, Volume 3. Give this away. Joining us from Australia, we have Leanne Charlotte, who is the founder of Building Your Mindset Muscle. Leanne openly shares her life's journey with others so they can uncover deeper awareness into their own and restart their journey with gratitude, joy, and fulfillment. Leanne is a co-author of the book, My Voice, Stories of Transformation and Purpose by Women of Substance, Volume 2. There we go. Next up, we have Vino Balan, who's based in Singapore. She is a business expansion champion and business strategist with over 20 years of experience. Through her organization, Be Connected, a B2B business matchmaking consultancy, she drives business partnering, and stakeholder management. Binu is also co-authoring her first book, My Voice, Volume 6, which is going to be released in Jan 2023. Next up, we have Julie Aswani, who is a high school teacher and a mental health counselor in Hong Kong. 
she has dedicated her life to raise awareness of a rare physical condition called arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. I hope I said it correctly, short for AMC, a condition she herself was born with. Julie is the co-author of the book, My Voice, Journeys of Self-Discovery and Resilience, Volume 3. Based in Singapore, Mahal Rajan is the founder of Meta Destiny, through which her speaking engagements and training bring clarity to youths and women who struggle with their sense of identity. She is a co-author of the book, Shake It Stirred But Not Deterred. And it brings me great, great pleasure to announce to everyone that a solo book, Repurpose, just became an Amazon number one bestseller. So can we all give her a big round of applause and congratulations on that. And with that, please everybody join me in welcoming all these wonderful women who are here today. Um, Shika, if you've got everybody, should we try and do another group picture or would you wanna do that a little later? Oh, no, she's not here. Yes, yeah, so nope. she's joining in, in about five, 10 minutes. So we can do it sometime in the middle. Okay, I think I have too much light on me. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Lucky I'm using my kid's Ikea table today. Ah, this is better. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, there we go. Don't worry, we'll edit this bit out. Okay, let's get started. So our first question for today is, why is it important for us to share our journeys? Now, I'll call out to a couple of you to hear what you have to say about that. Bindu, did you want to go first? Sure, I wouldn't mind. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, why is it important for us to share our journey? Uh, well, there are two benefits that I see out of it. Uh, the first is that um, it liberates us while we are alive. And secondly, it makes us immortal when we are gone away. Um, so yes, when we share our story, um, it kind of, for me, it actually sunk inside in my system, like every cell of my body now knew my story, that I owned up to it and that I accepted it. Because until I did that, it was just floating somewhere in bits and pieces across somewhere in my body, in my, in my very being. But when I wrote it out and it got printed and it was out in the world, uh, I was compelled to own it, compelled to accept myself with my past baggage. And that kind of liberated me completely. Uh, so that is why I think it's important. And it is this very liberation, this very uh, activity of putting it out in the world, writing a book or writing a chapter on it, uh, that healed me and transformed me. And I truly believe that once we get transformed, it gives us the power and the responsibility to transform others' lives. So for me, yes, that's number one reason why it's important to share our story. And yes, as we all know, the second reason is uh, it inspires someone who's reading it and is going through the same stuff or has gone through the same stuff or similar situation. It will help, the, help them heal themselves as well. So um, yes, I, I am very happy to have been out doing that. And thank you very much, Global influences Neera Shikha for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. And so true. Um, Nasha, did you want to go next? Sure. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. That's great. Um, thank you for having me here today. Um, I think there are three themes I would like to talk about. Um, I think by sharing our journeys and stories, it forms a deeper connection with us because all of us are humans after all. So it forms a deeper connection between your human society around you. Learning more about someone and their stories enables us to understand them on a different level and hence form that deeper connection. Secondly, we're able to learn from others. Um, hearing the stories from colleagues, strangers, your family or your friends means that you can learn from their experiences, good or bad. 
Um, and this type of story sharing, I think, is an amazing way to gain insight um, so that you can take action for uh, something that you may never have heard about before. And thirdly, I think I agree with Bindu. Um, it can provide a lot of inspiration to others. Someone open up, to, opening up to share their stories can inspire us in return. So this can motivate us to take action, um, do something productive, whether it's something completely new or something that we've been thinking about for a long time. So Bangladeshis like me are famously very hospitable and friendly people. And so my journey was destined to be as breathtaking as the lush landscape with more shades of green than one can ever imagine. And on a personal level, sharing that journey gave me greater freedom and it also empowered me. So thanks to Shika and Nira for allowing me to do that in volume six. Thank you. Thank you very much for that honor sharing. Leanne, did you want to go next? Thank you. Um, if I'm echoing, I'm in a bathroom avoiding noisy men next door. I think it's really important for us to share our stories so that we can empower others to be vulnerable, to be honest, and to strive forward with their lives. I know that I talk about taboo subjects. I talk about the, that nasty underbelly that we try to avoid and it is vital for our future generations to talk about these things so thanks to these amazing women we have the ability to share our story thank you thank you for that thank you so much Vinu, did you want to go next You'll have to unmute yourself first. Sorry. Thank you. Um, it's lovely to be here today with all of you. I believe we inspire others by sharing our stories. The sharing becomes all the more worthwhile when we realize that this isn't just about yourself. When we inspire, encourage, and empower others with that journey, you truly know that your story had to happen. Um, sharing our story also helps us connect with others on a deeper level, just like Nasha just mentioned. When people see how amazing your journey has been, they will want to know you better and on a higher level. And beautiful friendships are born of such connections. And my life in the last 10 years has been testimony to that. And last but not the least, sharing our journey helps us, be, helps us be heard and to raise awareness. So thank you, Shika, and thank you, Neera, for creating this forum to help us share our story and empower us. Thank you. Thank you very much for that honor sharing, Binu. Mavada, did you want to go next? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I, I think sharing our stories is important uh, because somebody can gain some knowledge. And I believe that we are not here for, we are here as messengers, small messengers to give our stories, to share our knowledge, to, sh to share our experiences. Um, and I'm that type, I'm an extrovert and I'm able to do that. But some people, they're introverts and they don't like to talk a lot. And I come from an Arabic culture and usually it's not, you don't say your private stories, you know, everything is a beautiful picture, which is not true. Day-to-day -day life, sometimes you go through bad things and we need to, share those bad things because maybe your neighbor or your friend or your cousin or your sister might gain some information from what you what you what you've experienced already so one of the stories that i mentioned in the book was that when i was trying to get pregnant i tried to get pregnant in a very natural way and i was able to to get pregnant i had three boys alhamdulillah i'm grateful and i share the story how and even my husband shares it because we could help others. We could help others to, to try a natural way and it could be successful. And I take that as 
and lots of people they go through medical and they go through hormones and maybe that's the right path i'm not saying no but there are other ways so and people don't know a lot of the other ways so these are things that i experienced why not share it if i learn something new why not share it me as a life coach i tell them every if somebody wants to become a life coach i give them all the information that i i tried the coaching that i went through the different modules that i've done I could share that. I don't have, I'm not the only coach in this world. I wish everybody can become a coach, you know? So this is something that's sharing the information, giving that knowledge helps people. It gives them more information, more thing, more better ways to experience life and enjoy and live in joy and happiness and love. Thank you. So true. And again, you know, the whole sharing um, from a cultural standpoint, and I think also it's, it's not just culture, but across the globe, it's all about the fact that we don't share our problems or we don't because we, we need to show people that, you know, our lives are perfect. We got everything in control for many reasons, whether it might be guilt that we don't want to show to other people or whether shame It could be many reasons. But a lot of times we don't actually share those things um, without realizing what benefit it can have, not only on other people, but on us as well. So thank you for sharing that, Mavata. Julie, did you want to go next? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's photograph now before we move on to the next one. Sure, let's, let's let uh, Julie finish. And then before okay. we start the next section, we'll do it. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. Um, and I truly believe that this is such a beautiful question itself. You know, um, basically, you know, when we why we share our stories and why is it so important to share our stories? Because these stories only make us human. Like these stories that we have, it connects us to the universal truths. And we all tell our stories about ourselves. We share about our experiences our twists and turns and our ups and downs. And it actually makes us who we actually are. And it also makes us, uh, each one of us over here, it all, all makes us very unique. That's the first reason. And the second reason, as everybody has also shared, um, I also agree with most of you that, you know, stories have an incredible power to reach others uh, because they, they teach us something and they inspire us and they also challenge us to think, oh, I haven't heard about this before. So, you know, this is something that we can think about how to change. How do we deal with people? And how do we, uh, like, for example, for my story is about a rare condition. I've never faced anybody and somebody like myself as well. So by sharing my story, it opened, it opens up, you know, my heart and invite others to even share about their own story. And also, it also gives me, and it gives, like by sharing stories, it gives us a sense that we are not alone in this journey. So this is the reason why I feel that staring, sharing stories are very important. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. I do agree. You're so right that even for us, you know, for Shikha and I, when we were going through this and talking to all of these women, we learned so much. You know, we otherwise only know about our own lives and things that are happening, and that made us so much more compassionate for other people as well we learned how important it is to know what is probably going on and you know if all of us we we bring our best foot forward best face forward but there's a lot going at the back end and to just know these things and just to be like you know i'm there for you um i think that that is very powerful as well and that can only come if we have the courage to share. So thank you everybody for that. Now, before we move on to our next question, since we have everybody, let's try and do another group picture. We can all just fix our hair, don't worry. Everyone's looking beautiful and amazing. <laughs> all right, Shika, we're ready. And one more. I feel like always breaking up into a dance when we do that. But <laughs> all right. So now our next question is for all of the panelists. 
And what I'll again do is I'll probably call out to you as I see you on the screen. Um, and then you can you know, take a couple of minutes to share about this. So my next question is, what's your story? And how did it feel to share it with the world? So let's see, um, Julia, I'll go with you first since you just finished. So let's, let's have you. Uh, and just so that everybody knows, Julie is heavily pregnant. How many weeks now? Are you delivering this month, right? Yeah, in about three three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. So it's almost happening for her. So she did say that, you know, she's in a lot of pain. So I said, all right, well, but thank you so much for still joining us. So I'll let you go first. Yeah, so actually um, my story, as I mentioned earlier, is about my personal journey about my rare physical condition called arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. To put it short, it's called AMC. And uh, basically what it means is that it's so rare, it only happens in uh, one in 3,000 live births. And it's the curving of the bones. So uh, practically for me, uh, that's what it has not been so um, difficult for me, but uh, it's, it does have an impact on me in my mobility, and uh, you know, having to do a lot of things that I need help with. So um, there are so many things that I've gone through that why I wanted to share about my story is because I felt that I honestly, I, when, I, well, when I approached uh, 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 Nira, I felt like I was all alone. And I felt like if I'm feeling like this, there's so much support for cancer awareness. There's so much support for breastfeeding as well, but there's not much support for like conditions, rare conditions like my condition. So when I started to open up and when I started to write about my journey, I actually felt that as I was writing my chapter, I could relive and go back into the past of what I experienced. And I said, oh my God, if I did not even have this courage to write this, uh, I don't know what other people are facing as well, because you know, not we don't know much about what people are facing as well. So um, I, how I felt sharing uh, about this, when I, finished the, when I finished the chapter, I actually broke down because I felt like this is what I have been um, keeping it inside me for so many years. And when I finished writing this chapter, I'm like, wow, this is me. So when I said, wow, this is me, how would other people feel? And in fact, after, after sharing the story, um, believe it or not, I've had two people who have actually you know, read the book and come forward and uh, approached me. And they also shared about something that you know, one of them said their daughter also has a similar condition as me. And I'm now connected to a few people who have the similar con uh, career condition as me. So I think this is a huge achievement for me because I've been living for like almost like 30 plus years of having no support. And now it's already like building up network, opening up opportunities to help others as well. So thank you so much. And this is my journey. Thank you so much, Julie. That was just amazing that, and especially to know that people are coming up to you after you've written this book and you're able to help. And I always say to people, even if we can help or inspire one person, by sharing our story. I think we've done a great job. So thank you very much for that. And good luck to you with everything. Do you know if thank it's a boy so or a girl or is it still a big surprise? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but thank we look you. forward to it. Please, whenever it happens, do share pictures with us. Yes, We're all definitely, very about definitely. It. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Didi, would you like to go next? Thank you, ladies. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity and happy Friday. Um, I think um, for me, I've really, what I've done is really thought about this whole experience, you know, from writing the book and to where I am in terms of what my story is. And I think what is important to know in life is your story is always evolving at all times. Um, and I think for me, um, what I think is the pin pinnacle point of, of my story is um looking back and taking my expertise as a public relations specialist which is something that i used to do back home a passion of mine um and then walking or, or going into a, a different place from south africa to hong kong and finding uh, my beat or finding my environment or finding an opportunity for me 
to create um, opportunities or spaces for small brands, specifically women um, who sort of had their own startups and their own companies and needed somebody who would support them in terms of understanding their marketing, understanding how to package themselves. So I saw an opportunity um, to sort of do that for myself and them. And I think I found my voice um, in showcasing my own personal life as a mom, as a, as a wife as well as um, a, a person who's trying to make it in life to say you know you really can um, do that and always evolve in terms of figuring out what your voice is and going back to the first question rather about um, my voice um, I think the most important thing to do in life is to ask when you ask you get help when you ask you heal there's so many things that help that happen when you ask so the 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 the, the voice that you're creating it's um evolving all the time and i think um it's great um that we help each other and we reunite and we evolve um in 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 in, in re um defining what my voice is and it, it helps everybody so i think my passion was just to um understand that for myself as well as support other women um, who wanted support. I'm looking at my own personal passions, which is public relations and helping them out um, in terms of their small businesses. Great, thank you very much for that, Titi. Angela, would you like to go next? Oh, thank you very much. And I'm so inspired listening to the stories from these amazing women. Um, I can really resonate and basically feel the power that's coming from this and I think that my story again is about that whole journey of I came from a feeling of being helpless of being alone of being scared and feeling that I, I wasn't enough and actually the the process of um, going through sharing my journey and seeing how I'd fallen into a pattern and made lots of mistakes um, through the decisions that I'd made based on my background, I realized actually that as soon as I recognized and started to take responsibility, that my purpose, my calling is, my passion is to show other women who may also be feeling stuck, alone, afraid, helpless like they they can't get out of a situation because of financial um, worries or because they don't have enough experience or because they've only ever known this one situation that actually they have everything that they need inside of them to escape to grow to to break free and you know, just because you were born into a situation and circumstances happen to you, that does not need to define where you end up. Your your beginning is your beginning, but your end is is your decision. And I think that having the the, the this forum and this platform has really shown me that um, it's it's a way to empower other women um, who who do have that and I know from my own experience it took me you know nearly 40 years <laughs> to actually come to terms with all of the things that had gone on in my life but once I once I took that decision and I realized that actually I have everything inside of me as I said it's now my my purpose it's I have to show this and share this to other people and um you know just learning to set boundaries and to be independent without being prickly you don't have to be independent and keep people away you can be an independent strong and fierce woman but still allow people to come in and love you and support you and lift you up and i think that that's one of the the the, the journey that the best thing that has helped me the most is understanding that actually being a strong and independent woman also entails you allowing people to help you knowing when to ask for support knowing when to lean on people and um 
just being part of something bigger. So yeah, I, I really appreciate this amazing forum and listening to everybody else's stories. It's been um, fantastic and such great value. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And, and I have a new hashtag for you, Unleash, because that's exactly what you're doing for all the women in your life. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Noshin, did you want to go next? You have to unmute yourself first. Yes. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, hello, and good afternoon, everyone from Pakistan. So first and of all, uh, Shekha and Neera, thank you so much for uh, giving us this opportunity. And let me share this big news with you. I've shifted today, right now I'm doing it from my car because I've shifted into my own house. And I am so happy to share this news with all the great ladies uh, who are on this forum because I think I've worked really hard to you know, uh, have this point in my life and thank you so much. And let me tell you that what uh, I think by sharing my story, I actually uh, uh, faced my worst uh, nightmares and my uh, demons and that, that actually gave me the strength so it's like it's okay if something bad has happened in your life you can you can always have a new start and you can always rebuild your career you can always make changes in your motherhood and you know you can become a new person and actually i have experienced it that with all by telling people that what i experienced how i crashed and how i have rebuilt myself it has actually given me the strength and i've become fearless it's like uh, my now my reaction to any the any of the big news and God forbid it's bad or good. I have this calm attitude, and I think I have gained all this by sharing what was inside me, and I've kept it inside me for longest time. But uh, thank you, Nira and Shekha, for giving me this opportunity, uh, so I could you know uh, share and tell what I felt and from where I started and where I am today. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for that, Noshin. And of course, I've known you for years and I've known you past transformation and now, and you you truly, truly are a different person and we're all really happy for you. And congratulations again on the house. And I hope we're all invited to come and visit you. Yes, be my guest, stay with me. And I would love to, you know, host all of you. Fabulous. Well, thank you for that. Thank Michelle, you. would you like to go next? Wonderful, thank you. Um, well, amazing. So, so lovely to hear everybody speak and to share and open their hearts and, and be vulnerable and, and all of that. And, and I, you know, I've known you guys for a long time and I'm always in awe of, you know, the, the inspiration that you guys um, catalyze within people by inviting them to share their voice. Um, I've written in two books now and you know for me my my journey has been coming from a place of extreme self-hate very little self-esteem um, I've always been a very shy and very sensitive person and it was always difficult for me to express my truer feelings and not only that, you know, I also tried to be someone I wasn't to try to please others, to get people to like me. In fact, I felt I had no voice that I could feel proud of at all. And this is all as I was growing up in my early adult life. And as well as that, I had um, various childhood trauma and, and family stuff going on. Both my parents died at a very young age. It was incredibly difficult to navigate. And when I was younger, my way of dealing with that was to control my food. I developed a food disorder. I also drank alcohol to numb myself. So I kind of just basically zoned out. I was just not me at all. And so it all kind of came to a head when I came to Hong Kong, when I got to the point where I just didn't care if I lived anymore, basically. Um, but in the depths of that darkness, I found my healing. And one day I had this amazing experience of, of, of like a divine healing power, you could call it, come through me. And I knew then that my path was healing. And I went deeper into it. I ended up channeling a system of healing. And that became my own healing process through this, this divine spiritual power that came from nowhere. 
And from that, I kind of started to um, use it to not only activate my true self and heal me to come into greater self-love, self-empowerment, but also to share with others. And I'd always wanted to, you know, write a book. You know, I remember talking to you about it near many times about writing my book. And when the opportunity came and in the beginning, I thought, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do it, but then I have to do this. I have to get it out there. So twice I have done this now. And every time it's just like a real confirmation for me about what is needed in the world. You know, there's so many people who are going through these issues that no one talks about. And, you know, it, it's also incredibly sacred when you share, as you connect and meet people at the level of soul, at the level of truth, at the level of authenticity. And, you know, because I know that when you are in those depths of despair, that you feel there's no way out, you also feel incredibly alone. I did. I absolutely felt that. So when you have a support network and the platform to be able to voice it and to support people through it, it's incredibly powerful. And not only is it about shifting and transforming the individual person, but it's also about helping individuals and society at large to evolve and grow. There's a much bigger purpose. And, and for me, these books, my chapter, all of us coming together, it's, it's about that. It's about that bigger picture. It's about shifting consciousness. And it's also about being in service from love to help others, um, which is obviously a great thing we can do to, to the world. Um, so, you know, they're the motivations for, behind why I did it. And, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for, for the opportunity. So thank you again. Thank you very much, Michelle. And uh, so right. And what I what I, I feel also what you haven't mentioned is how you're using everything that you know and have experienced to now empower yes. young girls because i think that is this is what yes. you didn't have growing up you didn't have somebody to no. tell you the right thing to do and so now you're going in there and helping these young girls young women so that they don't have to go through what you had absolutely and you know and that's incredibly powerful and you know sharing the tools with with girls with women adults all of you know everyone but particularly with the kids and you know being a mum myself of course i'm aware that i have to be a role model to my daughter so you know i i am that but also if i can share these and plant the seeds to these youngsters which i do through the programs then that that's going to shift and change. You know, we've got so much mental health, depression, anxiety in our youngsters, more so these days. So if these tools can help them, then, I mean, what else can we get? I think it's... Absolutely. You know, it's well, thank you very much for that, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. It's absolutely amazing being here. And what a phenomenal idea to bring together amazing women from around the world and cast their stories in a book. So Shika and Nira, you girls rock. With that, I'm going to start my story. In 2018, I was diagnosed with a critical illness. The doctors, I, it was it started with a bacterial infection, which affected the heart. And the doctor actually said that I was not going to make it if I do not go for an uh, open heart surgery. So two things on that. First of all, I was not ready to say goodbye. I was not ready to die because I had two daughters and there's no way they were going to grow up without a mother. And secondly, I was not ready to say goodbye because I had not left behind my purpose. I have not left behind my legacy. So in 2018, I went through a soul searching journey. Four years later, here I am. So I began to explore what, I, what was my purpose. And I decided that it was really to reach out to women on identity, on purpose, and what they can do to better themselves and impact, use their strengths to impact others. When my two girls were born, I was actually uh, undergoing um, anxiety and depression that actually led to low immunity and eventually to the heart condition. So here I am talking to youths and women and telling them that it is okay. It is okay to be imperfect girls. It is totally okay. Just take care of yourself first fill your cup and everything else will fall in place so this is my message and this is my story and thank you for this platform for giving me the opportunity to share this 
Thank you very much, Mehal. And you're so right. It is okay to be imperfect. And, um, you know, we, we strive for this perfection. There's a lot of pressure, but we don't need to. And I love what you said that, you know, look after yourself first. Great. Thank you for that. All right. Who do I see next? Bindu, up next. Thank you, everyone. Um, I am deeply moved by all of your summaries. Uh, truly, truly. I mean, yes, we all share different volumes, but I think we have a simple single message that uh, we women can transform ourselves and transform our families and the world that we want, um, you know, to make it more beautiful. So congratulations, well done. And I'm very happy to be sharing this stage with you. Thank you, Neera and Shika. Um, so, well, coming to my story, um, it all adds up now after I, after I wrote the book and now that I'm practicing law of attraction and teaching my clients, all of that, it all adds up and makes sense now. Uh, so I grew up in a family where um, I faced and uh, some of my siblings faced gender discrimination. Uh, it was more like privileges to the boys at home and in society uh, in general, we see boys are preferred and have more privileges than girls or women and uh, that compelled me or I had my way out in terms of I shaped myself into a tomboy to get all the privileges and um, of course every choice comes with a cost and that cost was uh, I was not as attractive maybe I repelled boys so uh, I didn't have any uh, flirtatious experiences and all of that in, in growing up years and that's completely fine no complaints there um, but yes, what it resulted is uh, me being in a certain disposition, in a certain demeanor, and uh, people having to body shame me for the body type I was, for my dressing sense, and for other things in terms of my behaviors. So yes, now I understand I attracted all of that for the choices I made. So, so no complaints there, uh, no grudges against anyone. Um, and yes, so my, my topic, my chapter is called You Are a Natural Beauty, and it is on body shaming. Um, and my dad always used to tell me, you are a natural beauty. You don't need makeup. You don't need anything. Uh, you just smile and be yourself, and that is what is going to make you beautiful. Uh, and he passed away 13 years ago. Um, and although he was probably the only one telling me this against the other side of the world where they were like, shaming me for, for the person, for the body type I was. Um, I think my internal dialogue became more or agreed more with the other world than my dad. So I inflicted body shaming on myself uh, unknowingly, but for many, many years. And it took a tremendous toll on me, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, I was completely broken. And uh, it it was it just turned out to be taking a heavy toll. So I have had two miscarriages. I've had firstly trouble conceiving. I had major health issues one after the other, and a a broken, powdered self esteem. Um, so yes, all that I inflicted on myself, I take responsibility for it. And uh, it was only when I it all this hit hard in terms of my health that it struck me because by then I had two children. And it struck me, I cannot be doing this to myself anymore. It is just not right. And um, that's when my healing journey began. I, I healed myself. And my journey began through self-love. And I have understood, and I often tell my clients that they have no clue what self-love can do for you. Um, so it's like, I think it's it's just tremendous. It's very transformative. And people should heavily invest in it, heavily, heavily, heavily. So there is no, uh, I don't think it's 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 any time, any time it's a huge investment. It is just worth it. So yes, my chapter talks all about it. And I am so happy. I've had a few people read my chapter and call me. They have cried while they are telling me what my chapters and the key, ta key takeaways meant to them. So yes, it's been transformative for me. I have healed and I've helped people heal uh, from, all, from all those experiences and my chapter and my story. So, so thank you once again, um, all of you, and especially Neera and Shika. Thanks. 
Thank you very much, Bindu, for that sharing. And I totally agree with you that um, self-love, I mean, and it is true. We think we love other people, but until we love ourselves, we can't love anybody else. So we all need to take time and learn. And sometimes, you know, it might not come naturally to us because of our conditioning, but we can learn it. We can practice it. And only once we do that, can we love other people. And I'm so glad to hear that people have read your chapter um, and actually come back to you and you know the impact that it's had it's so lovely to hear that thank you very much for that Bittu. Mavada up next the reason why I chose to write this chapter um, I have I have learning disability and I was never diagnosed but my son is learning uh, learning has learning this, uh, difficulties in school and that's when I started learning you know, for myself, you know, I need to stop um, and look at my life. And this opportunity came with Sahar, a previous person who wrote in chapter, volume three or volume three, my friend, she told me, Mada, would you like to write the book? When she said that, or a chapter, I was scared. It was a big challenge for me to sit and really write these four pages. It, everybody, when they, because I have spelling mistakes, I have grammar mistakes and, and, and all of this. And, and, and it really was a big challenge for me to sit and really do it. And I did it. And it's truly, and, and it made me notice. And when I wrote the story, it's in, in, in volume five, uh, it made me look at my life and I saw how amazing the things that I went through. And even the, these difficulties, I was never good in ac academics. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't good. And that's okay. I'm a successful coach. I'm an amazing mother. I hope at least now my, my kids are, my boys are teenagers. So I hear some negative talk sometimes and that's okay. But I know deep down inside, I know that I'm giving my best. So having that, uh, looking at that and, and the support that I got from my mother and the support that I got from my lady friends and the support that I got from my husband is truly truly amazing when i when i read it again the, the the story it made me realize i could do anything anything that i want to do and and it really inspired me to to do more and like you said bindu uh, the part you know, that leaving a legacy leaving somebody you never know who's going to read these stories Maybe it's a 10 year old girl who's suffering with school and she thinks her father or mother tell her, you're not smart enough. You're not, you never know. You never know who's gonna say, oh, you're not pretty. Your, your, your body, you're too thin. I used to get that when, when I was younger, I was like 45 kilos. I wish I could go back to that. I tried my best, but imagine if I was 11 and I thought my body was not, I'm too thin, I'm not, I'm not sexy enough, even in, especially in the, in the Middle East, I, we have this idea and you have to be perfect, you have to the right body, the right, you know, so you could be the beautiful woman for your husband or whatever. And I wasn't, I was very tomboyish. I didn't have, I didn't, I, my body didn't develop only later. And that's these stories, these stories that we could give the new generation, the woman, even the men, to know all of this. This is truly, truly amazing. You guys, what you're doing, it's not, it's not, um, it's, some people might think it's simple. Maybe somebody might read my story and say, well, what is this? There's nothing special about it, but for, you never know who will read it. And it will make a difference in that person's life. And I'm really, really happy and, and grateful for this great opportunity for me to do just even a small message. Maybe in the future I'll write a book, but it's beautiful. And it has inspired other people. My small chapter has inspired other people to, to write books, you know? And again, thank you all, Miro, Shika, everybody, in, in whoever, all these 100 ladies that shared their stories, thank you all, because these stories will make a difference in somebody, one person, a group of women, or a group of people around the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mawada. And I truly know what you said, because everything that you've written in chapter is something that we don't tell people. It's something to be hidden. And even when I read it, I was like, are you sure you want people around you to know about that? Only because 
these are you know so many topics that we don't talk about and i do want to say something uh, again you know uh, for bindu um, and mavada when you said for me a lot of the confidence i have today um, it's all to do with my parents especially my father and a lot of times people do ask and they find it very strange but i grew up believing i can do anything and as a child when you tell someone that you actually tend to believe that and um, i actually believed it and so i never thought that i can't do anything and it wasn't pressure at all it never felt like pressure it just felt like oh yeah i can do anything i want and it's just such a small simple thing that we can teach our children or young people that we come up with to let them know and have that confidence because as an adult and now you know as a grown woman i'm and for me i thought everybody's like that and now that i you know i've i've seen the journeys of other people and i've realized that that it is so important and sometimes i make that mistake with my children and then i think about what my father did and today i have to say everything that i am is because of the confidence and this small thing that my father used to say um and he used to say it in hindi and i'll just translate in english to say my neera can do anything and even as an adult every time i come across an issue or a problem i say those words to myself and then it just becomes easier so it is really really important for us to continue to encourage young people and children and even it doesn't matter young even at this age we can all transform we can you know as we were talking about you know self love confidence resilience to say that you know what we can do what we want to do before we tell anybody else we're going to live a better life we're going to live a happier life we're going to live a very fulfilled life and then can we help other people so thank you very much for that thank you lian you're up next Okay, so I had the privilege after being published in Volume Two to launch on behalf of all of us to stand on stage on behalf of a hundred authors and present the concept of sharing my voice. And I took the words from John Farnham. and i made sure that people knew how important it was for us to share our stories to be courageous about telling our stories being honest and listening through our heart to people's stories every one of you i have read your stories except for in sick but when volume 6 comes out i will read that story and i know that taking the boo out of taboo which is the name of my chapter where i talk about sexual abuse and harassment i was sexually abused as a child and became a magnet for sexual harassment in the workplace i expected it i put on weight to avoid it it didn't stop it i became masculine to avoid it it didn't stop it i became pregnant to my husband didn't stop it i was a magnet until i learned how to love me how to say no how to have boundaries how to believe in myself and be good enough And in sharing my story, I've ended up having a number of people, male and female, tell me about the almost or the experiences. And just like all of you, know that I have influenced at least one life. Now, my aim is to change what my granddaughter and future grandson. like experiences because why would we let the pain we've experienced continue so i thank you 
120 women who have written, plus they can and not deterred. And thank you to Shika and Mira for your support. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you so much. And I I know I wept after reading your chapter, but I do want to thank you for taking us to the big stage and winning the award for us and on behalf of everybody who's part of my voice and chicken step but not deterred. Thank you so much for doing that and taking us to this whole new level, something that we hadn't thought of, but thank you so much. And now it has given us so much encouragement to actually enter the book. Again, you know, the whole imposter syndrome and things come up and we're like, oh, but should we do that? But now after winning one award, I think this is just the beginning and we're going to go out there winning more and more awards because i think every woman who's here and who's part of my voice and shaken stuff but not deterred and for who is going to be part of the future volumes needs to be applauded for their courage and needs to be encouraged for everything that they've done so thank you very much for that nasha you're up next thank you nira um that story, Leanne, it nearly made me cry. I haven't read your story, but you vocalizing that so honestly and from your heart, it made me cry um, up here. Um, and it, it resonates with me because um, all our lives consist of many layers. And that is what real life is all about. And you don't need to have the fear to share with your peers or your family or people you consider as friends. And um, secondly, my story is about learning about resilience and then becoming strong and resilient. Uh, my story is about a little girl, me, <laughs> at the age of four who had a near death experience uh, because I was diagnosed with uh, serious encephalitis at the age of four. And if I hadn't been treated, you wouldn't find me on this panel today. So what I say to my parents is, thank God they had the chance to give me the special specialist treatment that I was able to get at the age of four. And that treatment went on until the age of seven. And it was a hard experience for my parents for the whole family. And I'm sorry if I'm sounding emotional, but I think women need to find their strength from sharing those emotional stories. And so um, as a result of that journey, it's taught me to become a very extremely resilient and strong character. And a lot of people in Singapore, I mean, I'm based in Singapore, they say, how come Wah, Nashia, she's so strong? What's wrong with her? You know, too aggressive sometimes. But that's my character. And it's because of the journey I had as a little girl that taught me how to overcome those barriers and those um, issues that you face in reality. And um, one thing that I share with Nira is that I have very strong dad as well, who always encouraged me like, Nasha, you can do it, you can do it. And he's the one who's always pushed me forward throughout my life. So as a mentor, I would say my very first mentor was my own father, who pushed me to strive for excellence, because women can strive for excellence and achieve great things. Um, and thirdly, the resilience by itself is not the complete journey. So you must have a purpose in life. And my story is also about how I've pivoted those adverse scenarios. And currently, I'm on a journey myself, transitioning into a new industry. And I think for me, because of the pandemic, it's made us realize what's really more important in life. And I'm a founder of a new business, um, a woman entrepreneur. It's a hard challenge out there because sometimes women entrepreneurs are not taken seriously. But this sort of pivot, I think, was important after the pandemic. And I want to serve neglected and underserved communities, especially in South Asia, in the health tech arena, healthcare, health tech arena by um, 
creating a community where we can have impact investing for health tech and healthcare facilities for local uh, communities in South Asia. Um, because those small impact investing um, projects make a huge impact. And um, in Singapore, we all sit here, we don't face those challenges, but I think that's where I think I've pivoted myself to uh, help women and children in communities that are not able to um, have those opportunities. And perhaps through our network here, we can create that wonderful community of maybe finding investors who would like to support in finding solutions for health tech in um, emerging economies. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nasha, uh, really. And um, it's it's just so much power in sharing stories and and it's okay for us to be emotional. Um, and and I, 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 it happens to me all the time. And again, I've listened to so many stories and yet every single time I do that. And again, I think what we've learned is that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to sometimes say, I'm not okay, or I feel like that. And vulnerability has become power and just showing up as who we are has become power. So thank you very much for sharing that. Pino, you're up next. Thank you. These are such powerful stories. Uh, you ladies are paying it forward. Thank you so much. My chapter in, in the volume six is called Be Connected, and I'll tell you why. I'm originally from Kerala in India, and I grew up in the very effervescent, connected, and protected environments of the Middle East. Dad and mom were working professionals. I was allowed to speak my mind. I could just be. And then I moved to Singapore um, with a broken marriage and suddenly finding myself to be a single parent, uh, raising two adorable daughters. In all of this, the one constant I've had was people, always, as friends, partners, mentors, colleagues, the people that crossed my path or the ones that I helped bring together shaped my journey this far. So I'd like to say my story is one of hope and connection. You know, when life throws curveballs at you, it is natural for us to go into a shell, into a protected shell-like environment. Finding myself in this new city, with two young children, it was daunting. And I had to literally start from scratch, personally, professionally, and financially. It was very tempting to go back home. My family said, why are you in that foreign country? I mean, I don't have any relatives here. I've come back. And it was very easy to go back to the comforts of home. But I would say this city and the wonderful connections I made here helped me step into my light and find my shine. I really grew where I was planted. Over the last 18 months, we have seen ourselves finding disconnected, but we also understood that being together is not the same as being connected. This period also introduced me to a connection of a different kind, connection with myself. I would say pre-pandemic, I would never go alone anywhere and eat a meal by myself. I had always had to be with people. I would never go and see a movie by myself. This period allowed me to discover myself and connect with myself and also be able to disconnect with people in places that did not, did not help me grow, that did not serve my life purpose. I find joy in bringing people together from different environments and cultures and building awareness around disconnecting from which that no longer serves your purpose and helps you grow. During this pandemic, I created my own business of connecting people. And I would say through this journey of coming from an environment where there was plenty of connections to finding myself in a world where I had to take responsibility for not just my life, but for also two budding young lives. I think it was the network and the connections that I grew in the city that helped me become what I am today. And so I can very clearly say that I've come full circle with my circle of friends within the circle of life and to advance the human connection. So my story, I would say, is about how to be and to be connected and i'm glad that i'm able to share my story because now i know that my story had to happen because if it if 
it did not happen, I would not be able to share it with you or with my kids. I want them to grow in this world as fearless young women and bloom where they are planted. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you so much, Prino. And we all know how hard things can get. And you know, in one way, you said that the community was important, people were important. But at the same time, you also realized that it's okay for you to do things on your own as well. I mean, whilst we want the support and it's great to have the support, sometimes you just have to do things on your own and we need to have that strength and courage. Um, to be able to do that. So thank you very much for sharing. And with that, I want to bring Valerie here. Valerie was uh, in the audience and I, I saw her and I said, oh my God, we have to bring her in. And uh, welcome Valerie um, to the event today. And Valerie, uh, many of you would know, is the author of the best-selling book, Shake and Stud, But Not Deterred. She is based in Singapore and she's a 360 marketing and business leader. Her passion is for DNI, uh, which is diversity and inclusion. And um, after uh, receiving her I'm Remarkable training, she is going on to empower other women and unrepresented or underrepresented groups to speak openly and build confidence and she herself has now become a speaker and advocate for self-development and success so welcome valerie and um, you know tell us about why you decided to share your story and uh, you know share your journey with people in the world thank you anira and shika for um bringing me on because I, I joined this to go and hear what the ladies was talking about and, and, and truly it raised something to me that I, I felt as a woman that we need to support each other more as when I heard all these stories, all these um, heartaches, the journeys and learnings and all that, I felt that woman has, I would say, a, a tougher journey compared to men. I don't, it made me realize that there's not many like um, forums such as this where men will tell about their stories and things like that, but they are for women. So I feel very inspired learning that. And that also led me to tell, wrote my story in the book, Chicken Stir But Not Deter. Because I felt that it's very important that we share our story, no matter how big or small it is. Because when people hear our story, they get motivated, they get inspired, they learn from it. Because I also learned from my story when I was went through a retrenchment during the pandemic and how I, I dig deep in my heels and, and persevere. And through grit and determination, I did the career period during the hardest of all time, which is during the pandemic. Yeah. So during that time, it was very difficult. Um, it was very lowest moment because we, as, as everyone know, pandemic, everyone stuck at home and times was not good. And a lot of people were struggling also during that period of time. So, yeah. So oh, I overcame it. And, um, and that experience made me stronger and make me felt that um, it was a, a very, very unique experience, but I came through it in the shortest of time doing my career pivoting. And that was my second time doing career pivoting. And uh, it was a very um, tough time during the period too. So uh, I'm very happy that I got opportunity to write my story in the book and then share it to others. And, and, and I'm happy with the response that people are giving me and uh, they said they, they feel inspired, motivated from that. And um, that also um, makes me feel very happy that, that I can help others. I can inspire others to, to move on, to put their best foot forward in what they want to do. Thank you very much for that, Valerie. No wonder people call you the maverick of career pivot. Well done. And I, I, I love all the positivity that you brought even when you wrote the chapter and even right now and it's all about well you know what life's going to happen I just have to make the best out of it so thank you very much for that thank you thank you <clears throat> all right now with that I do want to move on to my next question and uh, this is this is something that really really means a lot and I want to know what is the impact that you feel you've created since you decided to speak up and be heard. And I'll start with you, Michelle. Um, I think that's a, a, an amazing question because for me, it, it kind of, there's so many layers to it. 
you know, in so many ways, obviously for myself personally, um, for my clients, uh, for my family, for humanity as a whole. Um, you know, through through the story, you know, you're being yourself, which is expressing love, it's expressing light, and also connecting to your unique purpose or purpose purpose in the world because you're sharing you right and so when you put that energy out you automatically lift up uplift others by by being in that energy it's kind of like that ripple effect you know it, which which leads the way for others to follow as well um so you know as i as i shared my story my voice you know it, it really gave people hope and inspiration um, it gave them the belief that that they can do it and it it also encouraged people to take steps to use the tools that i teach in the sessions and the training programs that i offer and they experienced that transformation that growth that healing that love that connection the opening of their hearts you know they took steps to claim their power and to fulfill their sole purpose so it's like as i led myself as i believed in myself as i could created a different life you know i've stepped out of my comfort zone and and built upon what i've already established and and that kind of you know that little that little me that had no voice in the beginning it, it suddenly shift i feel like i'm a completely different person to what i was you know before um uh, and you know and, and as i said clients have also shared the impact it's had on their lives um but i think more than anything and i kind of mentioned this earlier is that it really is about seeding those qualities of truth uh, of light and authenticity which is really what our world needs you know to to spread that love and the will to good as i call it on the planet and I know, and as that energy shifts on the planet, we, we help to move beyond this darkness and chaos that we are entrapped in, that people are entrapped in, in their own minds, in their own head. Um, so this is kind of, that's how I see it. That's how the energy is shifting and changing humanity um, as a whole, as well as each individual. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, if, if I can share tools that help women and children, then that sets the seeds for their own growth and development in the future. So I guess in a nutshell, I would say hope, inspiration, belief that people can do it, can change their lives, that all is not lost and that there is a way forward, um, that people can live the life that they seek, um, you know, as well. So I think to me, there's just, I mean, I could go on, but I, <laughs> but there's just so many layers to it. So thank you. Oh, where's Nira? She's disappeared. Look at me, I'm like uh, blabbering and everything. And what I wanted to say is, um, it was interesting because you know what the impact um, that writing in the book has created. And uh, when we were discussing, it's like, you know, do we want to talk about the impact it has created for us? Or what has it done for exactly. others? And that's just what a beautiful thing that you came up with. And I said, that is so true. That is so true because it has not only impacted others, but it has impacted us as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, Titi, how about you? Oh, oh I did that. I was on mute. <laughs> I was on mute. <laughs> Don't worry, I did that. <laughs> yeah. So I think for me, what, what it's done, it's, it's liberated me in a sense of being present. Um, I think that's a topic that I've, my, my, my father and I have always had in terms of, um, you know, you go through life, different stages, your childhood, you know, different things. And it's like, how do you um, become present? And I think being part of this journey, sharing my, 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 my journey allowed me to be present in who I am, not just from a work point of view, but uh, just as a person, as a mom, as a friend, it allowed me to really be, um, be present and understand who I am and where I'm trying to go. Um, it's allowed me to um, be more open to myself because I think that the, the journey is inwards, outwards, you know? Um, it allowed me to not look at the world to say, oh, what can I give? What can I give? I said, what can I give myself? So I think this was such a personal journey to say, what is my voice? What is inside of me? What am I trying to figure out? 
and be present and then be able to then, you know, the cup then runneth over where then I'm able to share and experience um, uh, my life with, with different people. So I think for me, that's really what this whole um, experience has done. It's it's liberated me to understand myself a little bit more just across everything that I am and um, allow myself to be open with others. Specifically, really, and I think going back to uh, uh, the ladies that I work with or that, I'm, that, that sometimes, you know, are very not, you know, being... Um, honest with themselves is what it is i i i i've taken my, what i do and 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 i i have a different set of eyes for the ladies where i'm like okay maybe you know she she's not coming forth to admit that i am this great person even though i can see that this person is a great person has the capabilities but they're not coming forth but it's deeper than that there is something else that they sort of have to you know, get to, and it's allowed me to connect with them from that point of view where they see my freedom and my authenticity. And, you know, I don't have this picture perfect, you know, life for picture perfect image to say, oh yes, I'm here too. You know, it's like, okay, you know, let's just work through this journey. And um, I think for me, that's the presence of it to say, what is my power beyond, you know, the passion, but what is my love and how do I then let it run it over? And I think for me, that's the, the liberation that I've uh, received for myself and sharing that liberation with, 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 um, with everybody. I think for me, that's the sort of the, 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 the grace that I've, I don't want to call it hum, uh, power. I call it, I call it grace. It's the grace that I've received from it. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that today. And I still remember that beautiful, beautiful voice message that you left for me. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I I was in tears and I just, I, if, if it's okay with you, I just want to share a little bit about that where today was, um, she had so much gratitude for everything, you know, through my voice, the fact that she was able to share it. She said it was always her dream. In fact, her dream was to come out as a speaker. And now it's so beautiful that she's already doing that. She is now, you know, speaking at platforms like this and others. And uh, the fact that she wrote in a book is, and she said, you know, it was a dream that she didn't even know that she had. And she was so grateful. And I'm so thankful for that beautiful, beautiful message you left. And to everybody here, and of course, to you that, you know, whatever we dream, we need to make it happen. And there will be people that we will meet in our lives that will help us do that. And we just have to be open to those opportunities and open to the universe to come and bring that to us. And so thank you very much for sharing that today. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you. Noshin, did you want to go next? Sure. So uh, I'm in the house now. <laughs> uh, the great impact which has been made on my life is like that, as I mentioned, I've become fearless. Secondly, as I have seen, I've certainly actually come up to come up to me saying okay, uh, if, if a marriage has been failed, it doesn't matter. If, there are many other things which you can work on as your personality, as a mother. And uh, I, my story has given, uh, you can say, uh, strength, support, uh, energy to the people, women, especially in our side of culture and society, because the marriage is a very important part of your life. And when it falls apart, everybody tells you, you know, what will you do? You can't, uh, you can't, uh, you know, survive alone and all that. But I think I have set an example uh, that I can be a great mother to my two lovely kids and uh, we can actually lead a happier life. Uh, you know, it's better to walk out of a toxic marriage and build up yourself, build up your career, build up your personality. explore the parts of your and I think this is something which has really really helped me out and impacted my life thank you very much for sharing that Narshin and we're so so happy to hear that thank Angela you. did you want to go next well thank you so much and um I think when I was sharing my story I didn't really go into too much detail but my story really was about abandonment. My dad abandoned me and my mom when I was a baby. My mother, I felt rejected me when I was about 13, when she got um, a new boyfriend who abused me and she basically 
ignored that fact and I was kicked out of home when I was 16. I then made a series of a really bad um, decisions, ended up marrying someone who um, was totally wrong for me. And so actually this journey has, I had a very bad relationship and idea about men and men in general and how you couldn't trust them and how maybe I wasn't good enough. But this has allowed me to just basically take a step back and see that one, not all men are the same that everything that happened to me was their journey. It has allowed me to heal the relationship that I had with my mother, which has had a huge impact on the rest of my life. And through that healing, I have um, been able to have a beautiful relationship with my own daughter. I have an amazing relationship with my husband now. My, my, my late, my first husband died. Um, but I have a, a wonderful relationship now with my second husband. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I feel that now I am much more able to help people. I can empathize. I, I was so full of anger for so long, but I've been able to let that go. And I can see through empathetic eyes. I can feel what people go through and I am able to help them to navigate the waters because I've been there and knowing that there is like a light at the end of, of the tunnel and that whatever people are going through, it is just a moment in time. And even though at that point, I mean, there was times when my daughter, um, well, when my daughter was young and I was married to my first husband, if she wasn't there, I would have killed myself a million times over. But, but she kept me alive. And, you know, now I'm just, for me, that is just such a, a, a beautiful thing. And so I just, I feel that the impact is that I am able to help people, not just through um, the mindfulness, but also through being able to create independence financially, as well as mentally. Um, that is my gift. And that is what I'm here to do. So that's the impact that this has helped me to create. Thank you. Thank you so much for so much honesty that you brought. And uh, it's not easy to share everything that you shared. So thank you very much for that. With that, Valerie, I'll go to you. Uh, thanks, uh, Nira. So for my side, this is actually my first time writing a chapter or book and also sharing a very um, uh, very personal story, uh, especially when it happened to me during pandemic. So, but it also gave me um, the motivation and also to come out from my comfort zone. And when I come out from my comfort zone and sharing this story and people who bought the books, read about it, even my mentors and mentee also bought it and then they give me they read and, and, and they, 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 has, they said they have very strong feelings about it, about my story. And uh, they said there was a strong determination and grit and resilience in me. So uh, that, that was, that was a, a good thing for me to hear because uh, that, was, uh, that was something that I, I didn't realize I had that much inside me. And uh, I didn't realize that during that period of time because that was the one of the down period of time. And, 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 and through my story, I realized that I really pulled through it uh, during that pandemic, yeah, and and also I, when I was writing the book, it also gave me reflections of how think back what what are the skill set, what are the the the, the support, uh, what are things around me, or what did I do to make me come through it, and there were some learnings that uh, I I didn't realize that was inside me, and I didn't realize there was a very strong support system near me, and that helps me to propel myself forward. And also that gave me ammunition for my I'm Remarkable training, which always taught me to, to I'm teaching people to do about self-promotion and personal branding. So I also need to walk the talk. And that was, this writing story also was a, another um, reminder for me to tell my own remarkable story and also um, give that uh, ammunition and that, that uh, motivation to others to, that it's very important to tell your story to others and because as you share, people can learn and you also can learn on your own self too. 
Thank you very much for that, Valerie. And I'm just loving all the comments and the support that's coming on the chat group. I hope you ladies are reading all of these messages. It's just so much amazing, so much, so much power to all of you ladies. And this has just been phenomenal. I mean, to be here with all of your astounding women, I am humbled and grateful. So thank you so much on behalf of Shikha and I and the entire team of KitKat Events and Marketing and Global Influencers Publishing has to be here today and share all of your amazing stories. Example set by each one of you is going to serve as inspiration, encouragement, and proof that anything is possible when you take action. To everybody else, we hope you've enjoyed listening to all of our panelists. Thank you for supporting them by being here today. Their details, as I mentioned, have been shared on the chat group. So please do reach out and connect with them. And this brings us to the end of My Voice Forum Global 2022. Speak up and be heard. Once again, thank you to all of our presenting sponsors, Mrs. Purvi Shroff and the late Mr. Rusi Shroff and our gold sponsors, GFC, Global Financial Consultants, for believing in us throughout the years. And of course, to all of you for being here and encouraging us and supporting us. Until we meet next time from all of us, take care and stay safe.